now being published for everyone to read. Um, but I mean, I think writing does have the ability to actually assist one to sort through uh, your own feelings, uh, your conflicting emotions. I think as you've indicated, life is, is multi-layered and multi-textured. It's not just one single thing. And that, I think that letter was written uh, in a period where I was really processing the possibility of exiting an over 20 year marriage and the pain that was accompanying having to make this heart-wrenching decision uh, because a man, you know, Salim was with me when riding the Samusa Express was, was launched. And I had tweeted at the time um, that this is the man who gave me the wings to fly. And this letter is really written at a period where I'm grappling with this, do I stay or do I go thing. Um, and, and that it's not a clear cut issue. And I think the issue of, of self love and knowing the self uh, felt like possibly the most important part of that letter. A reminder to Fahima don't expect another human being to pull something in you that feels incomplete. And yeah, so I think for me, you know, for both of my children, who are both here this afternoon, just just a reminder that um, the self is a complicated being. And yeah. relationship with Allah first, and then human relationships thereafter. Thank you. into Sophia's piece, again a very intensely personal piece, um, also about the breakdown for marriage, um, a marriage that began with a, a great deal of hope, but a marriage that, in contrast to Rihanna's, was a very short-lived one, and yet still an intensely painful process, not only for you, but particularly for the young people involved in it, for the children of both partners. So, you know, marriages today are not just about us and, and, and our nuclear families. Quite often they're about his and hers and theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Sophia's piece really, you know, I think speaks to so many of us here, even those of us who have not been married or divorced, because it speaks to the, the ways of dealing with conflicts in a marriage, but also to the ways of trying to heal one another through relationships, not just marital relationships, but all kinds of relationships. So Sophia, if you want to comment a little bit on that. Assalamu alaikum to the audience. Um, thank you for Marcia, for facilitating. And most importantly, thank you to Zahira for giving me this, this opportunity uh, to write a game about Britain and Somerset Express. At that point, I was with uh, the person in the book. And then when this came about, it was, um, it was very emotional. It was raw. It was deeply personal. And I think a lot of Muslim women, we are afraid. We are afraid to, to, to express what we're going through. And I think this gave me the platform to tell the rest of us that we can share our story, that we can make a difference for ourselves more importantly. And I think with me, it was guilt because people say, throw caution to the wind, um, take that leap of faith. And I'm, a, I'm an OCD person. I like checks and balances. So in 99 days, I actually committed. And if I sit here today, I can honestly tell people, commitment is like a business. You need to do your due diligence with any relationship, your checks and balances. And I think for me it was more anger at the people and more angry at myself because I took my child into this with the promise that this is going to work. And when you start seeing the signs of the guilt of this whole thing, you, you worry about community, you worry about family, um, how can I let it go? And then you need to realize that it's about yourself and the Almighty gives us the tools. He sends us the signs and he, he basically spells it out for you. But when you're blinded by this and you still want to forge ahead, he makes 
big changes and you just have to go with the flow. And today I sit here um, from a victim to a survivor to a thriver. Fatima's story, <laughs> you're really making this very easy for me. Um, where, you know, Sophia has spoken about the difficulties of bringing a child into a new marriage, a new relationship. And your piece specifically, Fatima, talks about the challenges of raising children in the 21st century as opposed to the kind of uh, with hindsight, idyllic childhood, some of us remember in the late 20th century or very early stages of the century. So your piece specifically ponders, reflects on that difference between those, between the generations, if you will, but also in much the same way that Rihanna's does and Sophia's does also speaks to the importance of self-concept and of relationship with our creator and the, the necessity of building a strong self-concept and a strong relationship with our creator in a world that is perhaps on a global level now so vehemently anti-Muslim and in many ways particularly um, negative towards Muslim women. Would you care to comment on your piece in that perspective? Um, so I, I actually wrote two pieces. Um, the one is about raising kids in the 21st century. And it is, um, like I said, like the dosh of kettle of fish. Um, kids are challenging and they, um, you know, just a look. In, in, the, in the right way doesn't get them settled down or quiet. <laughs> they will challenge you every, I mean, mm -hmm. you just come out of three weeks of holiday. I'm looking forward to Tuesday. We've <laughs> 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 cakes and we've done, I, you know, I've done everything possible to stimulate each one. Um, it's tiring and it's exhausting. But it's also very rewarding. Um, nothing can prepare you for motherhood. Um, and how, how different your children are as well, which is something else you talk yes, about. Yes, from each each one. So you try and, and be, um, treat them all equally, um, but they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. So at some level, you there are differences, and then um, it's a struggle within yourself um, about that. Um, the other piece I wrote about is um, the expectation of marriage and um, and your mindset going in and how two people from very different backgrounds, um, especially if you come from a divorced background where your parents were divorced, um, is challenging in the way that you come with a lot of emotional baggage of your own. Um, and sometimes your self-esteem is, is not great. Um, so there's, marriage in itself is challenging, and then having these issues of your own makes it more difficult. But having the right person that puts you right, basically, uh, <laughs> helps. Um, you know, just to, st I think it make, marriage can also make you a better person. So um, finding the right person who can deal with you and all your <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think um, that that theme of you know completing one another mm -hmm. is is a very prevalent theme in in Islam, um, but quite often completing one another tends to mean healing or trying to heal one another, and sometimes successfully, alhamdulillah, and sometimes not so successfully, and perhaps there are reasons behind that too. Which brings me to Sabira's piece, the title of which really intrigued me. Um, how, if I just had to take a poll, how many people would say that their children's favorite food is a toasted cheese sandwich? 
are pleasurable memories, others not so pleasurable. What for you in writing that piece? What did you get out of having the courage to write it and put it? Assalamu alaikum to you, Aisha, and to the audience, and a very special thank you to Dr. Gina for approaching me to write my story. I really did grapple with sharing it. It was a story that was kind of swirling within me, I think, for many years. And I grappled with the idea of sharing something so personal, a narrative so personal, being in the public eye. And then I realized that, you know, we're all going through a challenge, we've been through a challenge, we're going to go through a challenge. And I wanted to share the ebbs and flows of my life. I actually found it very cathartic. I wrote it within two hours uh, on a Sunday evening, and I found it very cathartic to share my story. And when I went back and I read it, and only one other person read it besides myself, and it was just, it was a testimony to my life, to the experiences that I've been through in my life, and um, the person that I've become today. And for me, it was, it was very cathartic. It was very, um, it was a journey writing the story. And I was actually really proud after I finished that to realize that life has been a series of, uh, you know, ebbs and flows. And I come to do that. This is where I stand today. So it was a, a very, very, um, it was very cleansing to write this particular story. And I love toasted cheese. <laughs> and and that, it almost seems like the toasted cheese sandwiches at times were catalysts for things, for you to do things that you needed to do in your life. I'm, I'm kind of reading between the lines there, but I'm kind of getting that sense. So um, you say here a little, a little secret about toasted cheese, sand about toasted sandwich perfection. It has to be made at home. <laughs> fancy restaurants use unnecessarily fancy breads and cheese. And cheaper restaurants give you damp bread filled with fake cheese. <laughs> it's a good lesson for many things that are at times unnecessarily fancy. And at times when we try perhaps without too much reason to cut corners um, and, and do, do mis or injustice to ourselves. So I'd like to thank you all for sharing a bit about your particular stories. I hope that's made the rest of you want to read more of the stories. Um, I did start, I got this book yesterday. I was busy all afternoon. I'm a bit of an insomniac, so I started reading some of the other stories in here. I haven't read them all. But the, as I said, the titles are intriguing. The little dips I had into the book are, are so fascinating that I'm hoping many, many of you will read these stories and perhaps even be inspired to share stories of your own because I think it's important that the stories of people's lives are shared, people's everyday lives, not just the stories of the Winnie Mandela's and the Fatima Mir's and the uh, Helen Joseph's of this world, but also the stories of people who think that they haven't made a mark in the world. They may not be politicians or businesswomen or, you know, the highly successful professionals. Some may be. But they're also people whose stories have resonance with other people. We learn from stories. Stories stay in our psyche. And our collective psyche as South African, African, hopefully Africanist and feminist Muslim women are, are important contributions not only to the society we live in, but to what we want to leave behind for future generations. So with that, I'd like to ask the panelists here if there is anything further they would like to share about this journey. And if there isn't, then I'm going to ask perhaps those of you within the audience who have <coughs> shared from these stories and would like to share in this book and would like to actually contribute more to this 
to tell us about this. Just in passing, I'd like to say that these stories here, I, I mentioned earlier that there are some really comic moments in here, which are wonderful. That there are moments which evoke tastes and sounds and sights. There are also moments which speak of pain and loss and grief. Physical loss in many cases, physical pain in many cases. One that stands in my ear, that stands out in my mind, I read it last night, is about the implantation of an earring so heavily in somebody's ear that it was impossible to remove. Mm -hmm. But there are also elements of emotional loss that come through that are far less easy to quantify, to make real. And they're in here too. And those are emotions that many of us can identify with. Uh, we come from a, a culture that perhaps has traditionally seen women, Muslim women, as rather, as in, in, in as much as other cultures say, children must be seen and not heard. I think, unfortunately, the patriarchy that pervades some Muslim cultures, not all, also feels that women should be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. That we are ornamental mm -hmm. rather than intellectual, mm -hmm. than emotional, mm -hmm. than whole human beings. Mm -hmm. And that is why these stories are so important. At the very least, I would urge you to pick up one of these books and just glance through the first story in the book, written by Sophia Surti. I don't think she's here today. Um, it's called, very, very simply, Living as Aulia. And I think it's a very important contribution. So please have a look. Is there anything else you would like to add, Sophia? I'm going to stop there. And <laughs> um, I think every one of us has a story to tell. And you may think that your story has a pearl of wisdom. And I think for the younger generation, it's important to tell these stories. So it helps them navigate through this journey we call life. And I think sharing that and learning from it, and um, we aspire the next person. So my advice to all of those that are sitting there and thinking, as Ashra said, I've got a story, why didn't I do something about it? Just start by putting pen to paper, and you will see how it flows. Thank you. Thanks. So now I think I shall talk about um, the African perspective. Um, a few months after writing the story, I was at a well-being economies for Africa lab. And we were sitting kind of in the closing of, of this event. And the fact that many, many African women are grappling with many of the issues that are surfaced in the stories here. Because I think as gender roles are changing, society has not necessarily adjusted. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, as I was sharing some very deeply intimate issues with this group of fellow Africans, a whole number of very young, very powerful African women were coming and saying, but that's my story. Um, and, and so I think giving voice to what people are actually grappling with, and I think, you know, to also be cautious to not only have the narratives of women, because I think brothers, fathers, are equally struggling with what it means to be supportive as women rise in their power. Yes. And, and it feels like maybe the next anthology is actually one of what is it like to give a woman wings? And yes. what does it mean in a society that doesn't actually value that? Absolutely. I think that's a really <laughs> That's, that's, I think, really something to keep in mind, perhaps for the next anthology, Zaira. Um, and so, we come, Fatima, to you. You've got two pieces in here. I was only, forgive me, given one before the publication, before I got the actual physical copy of the book. So, um, if there's anything else you'd like to reflect on, I, from your writing, or about it, or in general. You know, I think, um, in today's times, there's just so much information out there and coming at us on Facebook and Instagram. And it's easy to 
they got up and look at all these gourmet meals or this, you know, fashionista or um, people were doing things, but there's more to it. And I don't think anyone should ever feel inadequate about themselves because it's easy to feel that way. You don't get the full story when you see a picture on Instagram um, mm. about how a real person is. Mm. And you can't compare yourself uh, as, a, as, as a mother or a wife to anybody else because you are you. And that's the difference. Um, and I think, when, if I think about <coughs> motherhood and, and yes, it's challenging and, and it's a lot of admin and there's lots of running around in between, <coughs> but at the same time, your ultimate goal is to raise kids who are kind and caring and compassionate and that realize that there's more that they need to do in this world. Um, you know, so to raise kids that they can contribute positively to the world. Sure. Um, I must say I'm very humbled to have uh, the opportunity to share my story with such extraordinary women, many of whom I look up to personally. And I wouldn't have been able to do, to do this had I not been raised by a woman who was tenacious, brave, uh, fearless, and I'm very grateful for that. So here's the old part of the women. And mothers, I mothers are not just those people who bear children, yes. but all mm. those of us, male and female, mm. yes. who have a hand in music. the house lights on <laughs> and if there are other contributors here who would like to share while we wait for that to know what's happened and hopefully some hands will be up but while we wait for that I also want to make a plea for myself I'd like everybody here who's contributed to this book to please sign my card <laughs> 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 all right are, are any of the other contributors to the book wanting to share something um, to relevant see. to this discussion, hopefully to make more people buy this book and read it. I'm going to have to start calling upon you if I can't yeah. see you. Did I see a hand up there somewhere? No? There's somebody here. Please, if, um, do we have a roving mic? No, we don't. Um, would you like to come up and use one? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. no it's, okay, sorry, uh, I should have, I should have checked on that earlier. It's okay. It's just um, actually a message to the co-authors. I am also one of the contributors. Um, I've just heard four stories, and I, I think my story shouldn't be in the book because <laughs> I was, be in the book. I was so afraid. Um, to share something so personal as, um, sorry, Sophia. Sophia said, I did start off with it personal because um, I know Zahira for a very long time and I knew what she wanted me to contribute, well, more or less. Um, and I wrote a whole story and then I looked at it and I thought, my God, how can I say this to the world? And then uh, part of the suggestion she had was, you can make it funny and that. So, like a coward, I just turned my whole story. It's the truth what I've said, but I made it the humorous side. And I really want to say hats off to the women who have shared the very, very raw, emotional side of their lives. And uh, hats off to you as well. Oh, for thank having you. Not only the courage to share your story, but to put a humorous twist on it, which so many of us find hard to do. Because, because of the, the gut-wrenching emotions, that are sometimes the accompaniment to sharing our personal journeys. It's hard to do, so hats off to you for doing that as well. Thank you. Okay, what she said, sorry, your name is? Uh, May Muna. Uh, my title is one of those that you mentioned about okay. the 30 cups of roti. <laughs> now, it so what about fall, the 30 cups of roti? I wanted, I, to, to bring that tonight. I wanted it to fall in the category of living with in-laws. 
But I think Zaira found that more amusing about the food. So here yeah, I had to make pretty cups of water. I think whether we love cooking or we hate it. As Muslim women, those of us who are Muslim women, women generally, because I'm, in any religion, there's a certain amount of food that you have to eat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we have a certain amount of food that we have to eat. Yeah. So we have a certain amount of food that we have to eat. Um, that we, we tend to gravitate towards the stories. What Maven has said is that she is awed and humbled by the fact that so many of the women in this book have had the courage to shed very intensely personal stories. Um, she says she wrote a story about her own very personal journey uh, and then wondered whether she could put it up there, was afraid to put it up there. And then Zahira, as the editor, said, well, you know, if you want to give it a lighter touch and you don't want to be so raw, I think, about your emotions, um, that perhaps you can put a comic twist on it. You can make it funny, um, which is what Maimona says she did. Um, but she says that she's very in awe of those people who shared the raw, unadulterated emotions of, of their personal journeys. But I think she is as much to be congratulated for having the courage to, to put a comic twist on what can often be difficult. Is there, is there anybody else? So I'm afraid there isn't a roving mic, so this is going to be a little more difficult than I envisage. But if there is somebody who has a... Yes, there is a lady. There is a lady where? Right here. And Rashida? Yes, Rashida. Okay. Yes. Do you want to stand up, Rashida? You can carry better. I'll try. Um, it's not also. It's not so much a question, more just a comment, and it, it actually segues into what Memuna said. So yeah, we, we're doing the segueing thing very nicely. You know, the, the, I think I also. It was the first time I contributed. No, actually, the second time I contributed. But it, it, it's a. I wanted to congratulate all these wonderful women, and because it's a very brave thing to do. It's really a very brave thing to do to put yourself out there. Um, but, you know, it's also a very rewarding thing to do. Now, my story is not very intense or deep or personal. I also did quite a funny little one. Um, but I, you know, I also write some poetry, and I find that sometimes I read my poetry and I go and I say, you know, Yo, I'm really putting myself out there. What am I doing? Can I actually do this? Um, so I wanted to congratulate and salute everybody. I also wanted to reiterate as to what we say, uh, what Aisha was saying about um, the, the, the stories of the normal everyday person. The normal everyday people are actually the heroes, you know. When we were in school and, and invariably we were asked to write um, uh, essays or uh, compositions on, on our heroes, half the class would talk about their mother and that wasn't a flippant mm -hmm. pop-out kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think we're very, very blessed to have strong Muslim women and mothers in our lives and I hope that eventually people will, will, will look at us to be those strong, you know, Muslim women as well. Because we have, we have almost an obligation to, to, to lead, as uh, you know, Brother Ashraf says. We, we do have the obligation to lead, not only our children, but everyone. And while the world is very anti-Islamic, it's our responsibility to say, this is who we are as Muslims. You know, we need to stand up. We need to have our stories heard. We're normal people, just like you and me. We have our own issues, etc. And we're we're we also want to be heard, and we also want to be take taken notice of, just as we will respect you and take notice of you. Okay, I'll I'll see you. Very clearly. Oh, thank you. That was great. Also, booming voice, Ashraf. Note. <laughs> Three minutes. Okay. Any last minutes? The lady in the red over there. Okay. Um, as Rashida said, we have the obligation to lead. The, in my story, I speak about choices mm. and that you should be very conscious of the choices you make because it, it's not just for you, it's for those around you. It has everlasting effects at times. And I think all the contributors here. I stand on very strong shoulders. You have all made an active choice to be a part of this wonderful publication brought together by Zaira Gina and our publisher, African Perspective Rose. So thank you for all for making the active choice and thank you to the audience for making the choice to be here today to yes. celebrate these stories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
brave enough to make the choice to tell your story. I hope that more of us will be brave enough, or funny enough, or tragic comic enough to tell our stories. Um, I have to tell you that one of my stories, talking a lot about how we relate with food, you know, one of my stories begins with the line, life is like cleaning methi virgin. And it's called dominoes because our choices, as the ladies just said, have not only effects on us and those in our immediate circles, mm -hmm. but ripples far beyond that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may feel that the pebble you throw into the lake of stories that are there mm -hmm. will have little impact, but it could have ripples that carries it all the way to another sea. Mm -hmm. So, take courage, read courage, buy the book, <laughs> and celebrate these amazing women, all 56 of them, was it? As well as the amazing editor and publisher, both of whom are, I feel, privileged to count as friends. Um, and, and really celebrate this and tell people about it. And get let's get each other reading one another's stories. Thank you very much for being here. Let us more applause with this super. Really. Great, great insight. And I mean, I just want to say this the for whatever reason with myself, it's always been if you want a gift, the only big gift I want to receive, really speaking, is, is a book. Genuinely. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. And and therefore the only gifts I want to give out generally are, are books, okay? And I know, from, based on discussions even with my wife Jamila and many others, uh, in, in the last few weeks, just talking about the content of this particular book, the point brought up earlier was amplified, like, am I good enough to write this? You know, when you, because you inevitably compare mm -hmm. with other people. But, but I mean, here's the story, it's got nothing to do with books now. You know, if you play cricket, for example, once you learn at the age of maybe four to, to hold a bat, the way it should be held, and then and then stroke the ball the way it should. When you're doing it at four, or when you're doing it at 35, like in A.B. de Villiers or Ashley Mamba, in effect, it's the same thing. You're just doing it on a bigger platform. The actual technique is the same. Why am I saying that? We're not talking cricket here. For many of you who've contributed now, and have written three, four pages, it was your absolute first time. But in effect, that's like the four-year-old holding the cricket bat and kicking the ball for the first time. If you now want to graduate to another level, just hold the bat, make the stroke, and repeat like 50 times or 100 times you actually have a book. That's my logic anyway. So I think there's a challenge for all of you. L lastly, just from your side, it would be wonderful if, if the 56 people we meet we now track their lives. We are able to do that digitally nowadays. Right? So I think it's a case of like 10 years from now what's happened, 10 years from now what's happened, and, and very importantly, what's the impact that that 56 people and the book make on the lives of maybe the 300 people that are not part of the 56, but are part of them anyway, seated here today. So thank you, all five of you. Thank you. We've made I was looking at some of the social media stuff. I did tell her I'll check it out. If you take me and take others, they're going to share it. That key hashtag to use is um, Saffron Book Lawn. So please do that. And I think some of you are taking pictures, but others, and even those that are taking pictures, may be missing out on the great quotes. But there's some wonderful quotes here. So my suggestion, from what you've heard, use that and then you know post on social media and then maybe tweet or Facebook or Instagram even a quote or two uh, from the book if you can, just a line. I think it'd be, and then and of course, then credit it to the book because you'll then engender sales along that line. And then later on, when we have when we get upstairs again, uh, take the pictures with these various authors. Take, take it, please. And you'll know who they are, the contributors. They'll have a tag, 
So it's not me, you know the others, they're all at PX. Take pictures with them, uh, chat to them, more than one picture posted, it'll be fantastic. Some of you who have posted, however, I've checked it out. <laughs> uh, I think it's Zubair Saleh who's done just that, so I've noted that. Okay, there you are. Jamila Garda, my wife has certainly posted. Uh, Musa Wenkosi, Samuel Maseko with that we are here, so there we are. Let's acknowledge Zahira Gina has but it's clearly done that too. Shakira Chahan saying, proud daughter at my mum's book launch. Oh, oh, okay. And another one from Zarina saying, proud moment for Shakira Rahman Saleh as well. So I think <laughs> There's also, uh, I think, an Instagram post from Hair and Makeup by Hawa, which tells you that when you have a company brand, we now all we know all about you. So that's <laughs> uh, and maybe the, maybe the same with Mediate Works as well. I now know who Mediate Works. I didn't know before. And uh, another one from Nural Nural M. I think it is who, who's been posting and Zahira about Ismail been doing the same. And then the, the last one that I picked up was Trendsetter Hijabi books. Okay, so there you go. Please do that even long after the event. I think it'll be fantastic if you do just that. So talking about Zahira Bam Ismail, we know that the, you may be aware that the beneficiary in terms of the proceeds of your contribution, right, would go to this outstanding organization called the, the Caring Women's Forum. And um, I've known them for a few years, but a little bit, well, a little bit a lot I know about them is they just stand for, for excellence mm -hmm. and they're able to amplify the excellence mm -hmm. around communities well beyond the boundaries within which they operate, which really is the essence of, um, of what we ought to be doing. Zahira Bam Ismail is an audiologist. She's clearly an influencer as well. She's a presenter on ITV. But, but very importantly, in the context of today, she heads up this hugely impressive CWF, the Caring Women's Forum. And uh, she's going to say a few words as now the recipient of the good work put together first by the editor, who then instigated all of you to put your work together. As a result of that, we've got some revenue which we can pass on to them, which will impact on to other people, will impact on other communities, and suddenly, like 10,000 people will benefit from just what was done here today. Zahira, thank you for coming. Thank I just thank you so much for the introduction. I'm Zira Bam Ismail. I'm the chairperson of the Caring Women's Forum. It's an organization that's in operation for the last 23 years. It's a non-profit organization and a public benefit organization. And it's run by 28 women on a full-time volunteer basis. Before I get into that, I just have to comment a little bit about this book first. Aisha, you mentioned the name Safra. And for me, I thought it tied in so much with women. Strong, but subtle, but strong. Mm -hmm. Gentle, yet fragrant. And you put us in any situation and we'll make it flavorful. <laughs> Dr. Zahira Gina has become my go-to person for a long time with regards to books. I'm constantly chatting to her to ask her, who's the latest person I need to be interviewing? Who's the latest South African author? Who's the latest Muslim author? And very much like Ashraf Garda, I'm a very proud South African. So the only thing I would have added to this title was a proudly South African collection. I think to you, the authors that have contributed to this book, hats off to you, a huge congratulations. You're changing the narrative and you're changing the cause of how Muslim women are seen, how we address, and you're giving us a chance to tell our stories. Something that changes the stereotypes that has already been put out there of Muslim women. So Jazakallah Khair to you. I just want to tell you a little bit about the Caring Women's Forum so you have an idea of where the proceeds will be distributed towards. And we will be pro profiling this quite extensively because the money that comes, even if it's a cent, makes a huge difference to the lives of many. Our organization oversees a number of things. We hand out bursaries every single year and we've got quite a big fund to give out to that. We do it in conjunction with Sansa. We look after a number of orphanages and centers around the Kauteng area, and now our reach is extended beyond as well. We look after whatever their immediate needs are. We take care of things in the environment as well as for the children that are staying there. 
We do school support uh, in terms of stationery. We do feeding schemes at a number of clinics. We do feeding schemes on a daily basis at schools um, and at Joburg Jane Hospital. We do frail care support. There are a number of pensioners and uh, frail care centers that do not have adequate support. We cover their rent, groceries, meat, bowls, medication, everything that is needed for them, and including making sure we have weekly visits, because one of the things that the group feels nobody visits 